Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about ca the calendar service on Mountain Lion Server. Now the calendar service is similar to what you would use with iCloud or uh, any of your other calendaring services, maybe Gmail. Uh, but it allows you to host that service yourself on your server so that you're the one who's controlling the details of it. There's really no third party involved who's keeping your information on their server. Uh, but it allows you to host it yourself on your own server. Now the obvious question comes up uh, for home users is should I use uh, the calendar server on my mountain lion server or should I just stick with iCloud? Well there might be a number of reasons why you would want to uh, do it yourself but I would say for most people iCloud is a great service. It works uh, quickly, fast. Uh, you probably could stay with that and be fine. Now there are times, however, when you might want your own service and, and that's if you uh, don't want to set up an iCloud account for everybody in your household. Uh, maybe you don't want to share a calendar together. You want everybody to have their own calendars. And maybe you've got kids. You want your kids to get used to a calendar but you don't want to have to have them have an Apple iCloud account uh, to do that and you'd rather sort of manage it yourself. Then this might be uh, a reason for you to want to do this yourself. Now, there's also a few other options on here that allows you to manage uh, locations and resources as we'll talk about. So there are there are uh, reasons why you might want to use this as a home user, but I wanted to lay those things out there first before we got started. So this is the service here. Uh, if you look at it, you can see there's no green light, so the service isn't on. I've uh, got the big off switch up here. And you'll notice it's a pretty simple setup. You've got settings, basically one setting, and then you've got locations and resources. So let's start with this setting first. Uh, it says to enable invitations by email. Now basically what this means is it gives you the ability to uh, send an invitation for a meeting uh, to people that you've invited. They'll get an invitation email. Uh, you've probably seen these before if you've worked in corporate environments and then you can decline, say maybe, or accept. If you accept it automatically adds that uh, calendaring event to your personal calendar. Uh, if you decline then the person who sent it out gets a message saying hey it's not going to work for me and uh, you can then go back and forth to figure out what it's set up is best. So I'm going to show you how to set this up but first let me just tell you that this is really made uh, for corporate environments or if you're hosting your own mail server. And the reason for that is, here's the problem, if you enable this and you set it up with, let's say, your outside uh, mail provider, whether that's on your domain or whether it's Gmail or something like that, Calendar Server will continually uh, kind of check the server to see if there are any new events that it needs to send emails out on. And a lot of times if it does that continually, your service provider is going to think that someone's trying to hack into your email account and they may shut your email off. Uh, because they think that uh, that there's an attack going on. So uh, what you probably want to do is not use this unless, like I said, you're running your own mail server or you know that it doesn't matter how many times your uh, mail service gets pinged. But I want to show you how to set it up anyway. So if you click Enable, you have this Edit button here. When you click this, it uh, walks you through a little bit of uh, a wizard how to configure the email address. And so what you can do is you set up an email address that you want it to go to. And this can be anything. You know, it could be, uh, you know, John, uh, it could be admin at server.john.com or whatever you want to set up there. Make sure it's a valid email address though so that the server knows what to do. Let me click next. Oh, that's right. It's going to make me put one in. So I'm just going to, I'll, I'll put in my own address for right now. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to put in my own so it knows valid email address. Then you go in and you set up the server type, whether it's IMAP or POP. You put your incoming server uh, information, right? Mail dot you know, toddoltoff.com for instance, or whatever that is, you'd put that in there. Uh, you'd put your port number if you're using SSL, right, if you're using a secure connection, and then your username and password. Uh, I don't think it'll let me go without this, so uh, I'll just put, you know, mail, just make something up here, uh, you know, John. Okay, so I'm just going to make something up here. There we go. And then you have your outgoing mail server, right, which is usually SMTP, you know, uh, dot, you know, something like this. And so you put that in there. You can decide what authentication you want, whether you're going to ask for a username or password or not. I'm just going to leave it at none and go next. And then it says, hey, here's what I'm going to set up. And once it does that, then that's the information that it'll have for the um, for the reservations that, and invites that you send through Calendar. Well, since I'm not using this and I, I don't have this service set up, I'm just going to go all the way back. It's a nice thing you can do, and I'll just cancel. And I'm actually going to not enable that because uh, I don't need that uh, that type of interchange going on. 
Now, on your locations and resources, that's the other thing you can set up. This is an interesting thing. What this allows you to do, let me just hit the plus button here, is it allows you to set up certain uh, locations uh, in the house. So, for instance, for home users, that might be like the living room, the family room, the bedroom, whatever, uh, and a resources. And resources are things like uh, they might be televisions or projectors or, uh, you know, whatever items you have in your house. So let me set up a couple of those just so you can see how they work. I'm going to set up the living room. Uh, because, uh, you know, in our house, that's where we have a lot of the uh, electronics and things like that. Who, who's watching TV shows at what time? You end up having those kind of arguments. Uh, so I'm going to set that up. Now, you can accept invitations either automatically or with delegate approval. And that just means that if you have a delegate or somebody who uh, views and manages the resources, they've got to be the one that say, yes, it's okay that you do this. Again, as a parent, you might want to set that up so that you can approve or disapprove the timing and things of when, they, uh, of when your kids want to use things uh, or anybody else in the household. I'm going to just leave it at automatically instead of that but if I had a delegate I'd put in a delegate name here I'm gonna click done and so what it's gonna do now is it added that location okay so that'll be available to me let me just add a resource so you can see what that looks like so resource and you can see it changes like a projector up here I'm gonna put PlayStation 3 because that's something that uh, the kids fight off of and fight over and I'm gonna leave automatically on there again with no delegate and I'm gonna put done so now you can see I've got a I've got a um, location and I've got a resource so now all I've got to do, if, and by the way, if I ever want to edit these, I just come down here and click the pencil, and it'll bring it back up, and I can edit it anytime I want to. Okay, so all I've got to do now, that's all the configuration, is I just throw the switch, turn it on. So now it's going to start up the service. Again, you can see down here that it's starting the service. I've got the spinning wheel, and so what I'm going to wait for is for that to finish, and the green light will come on here on the side that tells me that calendar is ready to go. And as you can see, the green light just came on. Now, one of the things I want to show you when I come over here, let's go to Profile Manager. You'll notice that now in my Settings for Everyone Configuration Profile, the calendar, uh, calendar application is shown up. Uh, this is VPN, which I had set up from before, but here's the calendar that sets up. So what happens is, is as you add services, those services automatically go to Settings for Everyone uh, if everyone is, is uh, enabled to have those services. So uh, again, I'm not showing you how this is set up through Profile Manager yet because I want to get more services in here so that when we get to uh, more detail on how to set up Profile Manager and do it that way, there'll be more services to configure and you can see how that works. So let's go back to Calendar. So now that I've got this set up, I've got to actually set it up on my on my different clients. So let me show you how, what that looks like on uh, just on my server right here, even in setting it up. So if I come to System Preferences, let me open that, and I'm going to put the server down. So this is all we're looking at here. What I want to do is come into this Mail Contacts and Calendars area. Now when I click that, you'll notice I've got all kinds of services that I can set up, but you want to scroll down to where it says Add Other Account. You click that. And again, as you can see, I can add very specific information. I can add things for messages, for uh, you know, uh, for my calendar, for card dev, for my contacts, those kinds of things. But since I have a server, what I want to do is I want to add uh, an OS 10 server account. So I'm going to click that and click Create. Now, what it does is it's, it has you select a nearby server. And so this is my server, so I'll select it. If for some reason your server doesn't come up, you might want to put your server address in here. Again, it could be server.joesmith.com. Whatever it is that you've set up, you can stick that right in there. Uh, and, and then once you've get, gotten that set up, you click Continue. So let's click Continue. Now what you need to do is put in your username, okay? Your username and your account. Uh, information so that it and password so that it will set it up for you so you would put this in for the user that is going to be using this account in a minute I'm going to show you how to do it with a joint calendar where everybody just uses one but in this case everybody can have their own calendar so they can invite each other and those kinds of things so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in uh, put in my credentials here and uh, put that information in and then you click set up and then what it does, it validates your credentials, takes you right into here, and says, okay, so I know who you are, and this is going to be for calendars and reminders. And you add the account. So I'm just going to click Add. And so now it's going out, and it's adding the account. It says, yep, everything's good to go. We're ready. Uh, calendars and reminders are set up. And you'll notice in my sidebar now, it shows that I've got the, serv the server over here, and it's got the service of calendars and reminders set up for me. So let's take a look now and see how this works. What does it look like in my calendar program? So let me just uh, put this down here. I'm going to pull up my calendar.
and you'll notice that uh, I've got you know my work calendar I've got an iCloud account but notice right here I've got an OS 10 server and it shows a calendar so I've actually got a calendar now sitting on the server it's added that now let's assume for a second let's see how this works that uh, my wife and I want to set up uh, an event here where we are able to play the PlayStation we don't have to worry about the kids alright so we're gonna say uh, we're gonna say parent time up here I'm just gonna call it that and uh, you know location wise uh, I'm gonna say living room and you see you notice that it pops up because it knows I've got living room there so I hit enter so there's living room and you notice it's it's set up because that is a location that I've got on my server alright and you can see I can edit it I can remove locations that kinda of stuff but it's it's got it right there uh, I'm gonna say that's for uh, you know today I'm gonna make it instead of an all-day event I'm gonna say we're gonna start at 7 p.m. Uh, to 8 so that's our time that we're the ones that are gonna do it I'm gonna add an invitee for a second so I'm gonna I'm gonna add my wife so it's added her on there now alright and so uh, now I can come here and I want to add a resource because I want to add the fact that we're using the PlayStation so there's the PlayStation 3 so there's my item it says check uh, everything's ready to go and I'm gonna click send okay so I'm gonna send it and so now I've just sent sort of that invitation now for this event that we're going to do that's gonna happen today you can see it adds a one over here uh, so we know that that's going to happen so now what we need to do is go over to my wife's computer so let's take a look at that okay so here I am over on my wife's computer and so her calendar is up uh, ready to go and you'll notice she's got a little invitation up here if I click that you notice it says parent time and it's the invitation it's the event that I sent and she has the opportunity to say maybe decline or accept so let's just say accept okay because she's gonna accept that and so now you notice it added it to her calendar uh, it says their parent time if I double click on it it pulls it up it shows all the information right and it's got the green check marks now because that means that we're good we're good to go right every all of us have confirmed we're ready to make it happen we've accepted it and uh, you can change it if you wanted to here but everything's good and that event is going to happen and so now what happens is anybody who tries to take the PlayStation 3 during this time frame or schedule this room during that time is gonna uh, be told hey you can't do that it's already been taken during this time so it's one way you could use it as a family to kind of schedule rooms and devices and resources and things like that uh, it's kind of a, of a way you can make that work okay I'm gonna put this uh, down here let me just close this down I want to show you one more thing thing that you can do uh, back here in the server application so like I said before the way that we set this up everybody has their own calendar and then you can schedule events between each other and that's one way you can use it now if you're a family you just want to share one calendar maybe some some of you already do some of that in iCloud you have the same uh, you know uh, iCloud account ID that you use between all your devices but let's just say you do you want the same calendar so everything shows up instantly you don't have to subscribe to calendars or anything like that you could set it up for a shared calendar now here here's how you would do that if you come up to your users up here what you would do is create a new user and so what you would do is just name this user you know shared calendar let's say and then you'd put in, you know, get your account name, you could put in an email address, a password, those kinds of things. Uh, I'm not going to do this, but when you're done, you just click done and now you've got a new user. And so when you go back into subscribing to your calendars, let me go system preferences again here. When you go back in here to subscribe to your calendars and you go to the, uh, to the main service, what you would do is instead of putting in your, your username and information here, let me just go back to details, you would change this so that it read shared calendar with that password and that would show up and you would put that on every one of your uh, accounts for all of the people in your household and then you guys would be using the same calendar uh, for everything so when you put it on yours it showed up on everybody else's you wouldn't have to do invites but that's just another way that you can look at doing it if you wanted to uh, do calendars that way well that's my uh, tour of cal the calendar service for you in Mountain Lion Server hopefully that helps you get started with that you can see how that might work in your own household I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac